And now we would like to continue the conversation with three panel discussions. Our first panel is entitled Innovative Programs, Stepping Outside the Box to Support Growth. And it is my pleasure to introduce our panelists and help facilitate this discussion. So please welcome to the stage David Cherry, Alicia Gonzalez, Albert Oppenheimer, and Manwa Lee. Well, you've already met David Cherry, so I'll just fill in a few more details of his resume. David was born in Harlem in New York City and grew up in the South Bronx. For the last 25 years, he has been organizing in the poor communities in New York City and Chicago around issues of democracy, social justice, and inclusion. Since launching the All Stars Project in Chicago in 2007, he has successfully implemented its core programs, the All Stars Talent Show Network and the Development School for Youth, reaching more than 2,500 young people and building a vibrant partnership between business professionals and inner city youth. David Cherry. Alicia Gonzalez is executive director of Chicago Run, which sponsors free running programs in high need communities throughout Chicago. Alicia grew up in both Chicago's Pilsen and Little Italy neighborhoods and in Mexico. After graduating from Brown University, she worked as a youth program director at Boston's Hispanic Office of Planning and Evaluation. She returned to Chicago in 2002 and worked at both the Logan Square Neighborhood Association and in Lace Chicago. And she also headed up Hispanic community development at a local Chicago bank before returning to education, program development, and fundraising for Chicago Run. She's been leading Chicago Run since its launch in 2008, Alicia Gonzalez. Albert Oppenheimer is project director for Yours Project, a program of the Chicago People's Music School. The Yours Project provides free after-school orchestral music education to Chicago public school children and is modeled after El Sistema, a publicly financed music education program in Venezuela. Albert is originally from Starkville, Mississippi, He's a recent graduate of the New England Conservatory of Music Fellows Program and studied directly with the creator of El Sistema, Dr. Jose Antonio Abreu. Albert began writing music himself at age 11 and began writing and directing theater in high school. Albert Oppenheim. Manwa Lee is executive director of Street Level Youth Media, one of the nation's premier youth media arts organizations. The organization is dedicated to educating underserved youth in the media arts for self-expression, communication, and social change. Manwa serves as co-chair for the Chicago Youth Voices Network and she's worked in multiple capacities over the past 16 years to advance progressive missions of local nonprofits. She has a BA from Augustana College and completed the nonprofit management program at Northwestern's Kellogg School of Management, Manuel Lee. Okay, well, now that I've shared all your traditional credentials, following Kathy's <laughs> direction here. I want to ask all of you to introduce yourselves again, this time as innovators. Each of you has stepped outside the box in your work, and I want to ask you to share some of why and how you've done that. Start anywhere. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm Alicia Gonzalez again. This has been fantastic today. Um, 
so much of what you guys are doing is really important. Um, what we've done with Chicago Run is to use sports as a way to fuse digital learning, cross-community collaboration, nutrition, and health. And you know, with I was a former community organizer, and I organized uh, around violence. So I, what we've done with our Running Mates program in particular, which is our after-school program, is to train our kids uh, from different neighborhoods together. So it's building bridges across the neighborhood divides. And so again, that's uh, the ability to instill cross-community collaboration. Um, and again, also with the teachers too, because the teachers are our coaches, and they're often isolated as well in the Chicago public school system. So it's a way for them to come together and, um, and kind of share best practices too. Thanks. Howdy, y'all. <laughs> so as, uh, as Bonnie introduced me, I'm from Starkville, Mississippi. Um, and it is an absolute pleasure to be here. I just moved to Chicago about four months ago, so if any of you have friends for me, come come say hi. And um, and uh, actually, <laughs> actually, uh, where I grew up, we have a saying: um, "Strangers are friends you haven't met yet." Right. Um, so it's a pleasure to be here with all of you new friends. Right. Um, so I. <laughs> again, as Bonnie mentioned, uh, I'm the project director for the Yours Project, which is a project of the People's Music School here in Chicago. Um, and we work with a system of after-school youth orchestras meant as social intervention. Um, so we are an intensive program. We run for about 10 to 15 hours every week that the kids participate in orchestra. Um, and we use the orchestra as a model of social life. They develop themselves individually and they contribute back to their community, the orchestra. They perform for their community. We focus on uh, engaging parents and tra transforming the lives of not only the students that we serve, but their parents, their families, and the entire community and neighborhoods in which we are. Hello everyone, I'm glad to be here. My name is Manuel Lee again, and I'm with Street Level Youth Media. Um, as the name of our organization um, speaks to you about our media work, um, we are an organization that's based in media and technology. In the mid-90s when we first started, we were one of the first organizations in the city to provide internet access when the internet was not available to young people and our urban communities. Um, over the years, technology has evolved, and so we continue to think about how we can give these tools to young people, make them understand media as a tool for self-expression, but really make them understand that they are the producers of their own stories. We think outside of the box because media is a tremendous influence on our young people, and we want them to know that they have the power to create their own stories, Every single day, we hear certain types of stories about the communities where our young people are from. Um, they're not necessarily reflective of all the things that we understand are valuable and important about our young people in our communities. We want to make sure that using media and technology tools, they are able to express their stories and tell the world um, what their realities are from their perspectives. And that's how we really try to think outside of the box using something that is a part of all of our lives. Well, for me, um, you know, the uh, performing and doing things on stage was really a, uh, really a very new thing, <laughs> you know, or even producing it because, um, you, know, I, you know, most of my activism, I'm, I'm, for me, we're going to you know, meetings or going on marches and, you know, and then I, you know, become an, uh, uh, an organizer with the All Stars Project and it's like play and performance. I remember actually, you'll meet Pam Lewis a little bit later, but, you know, going into a store with Pam, uh, getting some, uh, getting portable sound for our, uh, for our shows and not having a clue. <laughs> so glad that Pam was there having not a clue as to what we, what we really needed. But, so I had to add a new credential uh, to what I do, which is theater director, and just learning how to <laughs> <laughs> learning how to um, you know produce uh, talent shows, uh, you know, and and also supporting the performance of young people on stage and off stage, you know, and and uh, and also you know partnering with our business uh, uh, leaders with you know creating these 
environments, these cosmopolitan environments where young people can uh, perform in workshops and uh, participate in professional events in the homes of donors. And so all this was really new, but it was really creative and, um, you know, just really enjoyed. Thank you. Um, tell us a little bit, we've, some of our keynotes have talked about the after school field um, and why it's important. And why do you think it's so important? How do you think about this arena, this after school field? Um, well, actually, I wanted to talk a little bit about what Mary Ellen Karen said about hope. Um, you know, for us, I think that um, our children are really searching for an identity. And um, our middle school program, the Running Mates program, uh, targets that age group. And by being a part of a team, it's really a, in, a, in a positive environment, um, you start to develop a, more of an identity. And I think that that can be used um, as a method of prevention for entering uh, you know, into a gang or, a, or leading a violent lifestyle. So if you have, um, I think it's about building self-confidence and building um, and then finding an identity um, within, in, at least in the after school structure and, and in being in a safe place too. I mean, that's the one thing that we hear all of our students tell us is that they feel safe when they're with us and I think that's really important because the surrounding community is not that safe and so to be able to be part of something and part of a team has been really uh, beneficial to them. I think like all of us, we value our relationships and the after school setting has been a place for I think a lot of our young people to establish new relationships with other young people. Um, we run a program out of a community-based media center, and we have young people from 20 wards across the city of Chicago that come to us. Um, some of those students um, learn about us through the programs that we have in their schools, but the fact that they are able to transcend their neighborhood boundaries, um, come and meet young people from another part of the city um, based on their interest and their interest in developing relationships with other adults as well, I think really speaks to the opportunities that these spaces offer that are not necessarily always um, found in school settings. For me, the after school arena, um, in both in, in the program that I work with and in after school programs that I participated in growing up, um, I was very blessed to uh, participate in a number of after school programs. And for me, in out of school time programs, uh, for me, these were opportunities for me to discover myself, for me to try out, like uh, previous speakers mentioned, the value of pretending. The ability, and even if that's not specifically the program, when you're out of your normal context, you can try to be a different person, right? You, would, you experiment with different aspects of your personality and you build yourself. And uh, out of school time programs give you the ability to do that intentionally. Um, I was actually uh, driving some of my students to a performance yesterday and I turned, uh, turned uh, I didn't turn around, I was driving, but I, um, <laughs> I asked them, uh, what, what impact has this program had on you? And uh, one, I think he was a 12-year-old uh, oboist, um, replied from Albany Square, replied, the orchestra allows us to be who we are. Right. It allows us to explore ourselves. I think you know, when we think about the uh, outside of school and after school time, you know, it just offers such a, such, such a wealth of opportunities for development. Because starting with the fact that young people can voluntarily you know, make the decision, is, you know, this is what I want to do at my time. You know, like school is out, you know, what am I going to do? And they can decide to participate in you know, an after school program and do things that they really like to do and be able to go outside their uh, immediate environment, you know, outside the neighborhood and just seeing uh, things that are so new to them and, you know, can really spark their interest to, I want to do this, I want to do this other thing. And it's just, um, so I just think when I think of after school, just of the, of the uh, wealth of opportunity for growth that it provides for, uh, for youth. Right. Thank you. Well, picking up on, on Albert's comment, what kind of feedback do you get from young people? What, what, what's some you know, enrich that, expand on that, add on the add to that. Um, 
uh, the pilot program of Running Mates um, launched in 2009, and I, um, one of the, the kids in the program, uh, his biggest comment was it was an escape for him. So escape from what was going on around him. Um, and I think that, you know, I'm always reminded of Alex Kotlowitz's book, There Are No Children Here. Our kids are growing up and they have, they've seen so much already that they can't be children. And there's something very freeing about running. And so it, it can be an escape, but at the same time, I also think that it's a, a way that kids are actually finding their potential too, because it's a solo sport. So they're, they're reaching down into the, the depths of who they are to be able to excel at that. And again, our program is not just about the fastest runner. I mean, it is, it is a program that has kids from all, you know, all different sizes and uh, fitness abilities, but it's about um, when they cross that finish line at a race, it doesn't matter. I mean, and it's the, they, their self-confidence and their self-esteem has increased so much. Um, so again, uh, I think the escape part, but I think also uh, finding your potential and the self-esteem. So building, building on the comment that I received yesterday, um, so being new to the program, uh, when I was working with my staff to develop, uh, to develop some of uh, our sites, we have a site in Albany Park and in Logan Square, um, I brought a participant who had been with the program for at least a year um, to train the staff at the other site. So we had, I think, a 13-year-old boy um, training our staff and um, a 13-year-old girl. Um, and uh, the boy, uh, when asked what the impact of the program had had on his life, he said, it gives me the ability to be a healthy leader, to lead, to lead in a way um, which is not demeaning or oppressive, uh, because in an orchestra, the purpose of the ensemble is to agree with itself. And when was the last time children were in an environment where they were all work when 150 of them were working together to create something beautiful, right? Um, and I'll let the other young woman speak for herself because she'll be talking to you on our youth panel coming up very shortly. She's in the audience as we speak. Um, but it's that, it's that kind of, of ownership that, uh, that the kids express. A couple of um, years ago, we started a branding process or rebranding process with the organization. And one of the exercises that we went through is ask our young people what they thought of street level. And literally some of the words that they came up with were it's a, it's a second home. You know, it makes us feel great to be a part of the organization. We have access to tools. It makes us feel creative. Um, we know that we are artists as well as, you know, just young people enjoying ourselves. And so I think it's really opening up opportunities for our young people and the way they see themselves when they're in a space that um, helps them really just be themselves and be creative and kind of stretch their imaginations. Um, we have a facility now that houses a professional level production studio. And so for our young people, having access to these resources and seeing themselves as folks that have the skills to run studio sessions and really have the ability to produce media at a professional level is really important to them. You know, some, when, when we have the um, uh, young people participating, you know, in the beginning we have the auditions, the workshops, the talent shows, and they start out as performers on stage. And the next thing is to have them to help us with producing the events. And so a lot of young people are not related to as leaders, as people who are, you know, can do more than just be the on stage performer, but work behind the scenes, you know, like helping us with outreach and helping us with the uh, behind the scenes things. Like what does it mean to be part of the box office team and the sounds and the lights? And so many of the young people talk about that additional experience of coming in early and meeting the volunteers and being related to as, um, as producers and becoming producers. And um, in our development school for youth program, you know, they, 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 young people always speaking about having these experiences that they never thought they would have, you know, that they never thought they would, uh, uh, you know, be in America's tallest building, you know, the Willis Tower. You know, they never thought they would, 
you know, have a, a, a paid internship at a corporation, a real estate company, a law firm, a financial services company. They never thought they would be invited to come to a dinner event in the home of, of, some, of, of some of our supporters, you know, uh, in Deerfield and uh, Evanston and in the, the River North area and what it's like for them to walk into this person's home and to see what it looks like, you know, to be on the inside. And, and so they, they speak to me all the time about having these new experiences. And when they be become part of, an, part of the All-Stars, it's not that they're so much joining programs, they actually join a community. And we keep inviting them as we invite the young people to be here today. Thank you. Well, I think we all want to expand the ranks of after school professionals and people working in this arena. Um, so I'd be interested in your sharing a little bit, uh, and certainly many of you work with a lot of volunteers. So I'd be interested in your talking a little bit about what you think on the other side of it makes a good after school leader. Um, well, I actually, our, our programs are school-based, and I think that, um, so we work with our teachers, which is really important. Um, you know, our, our children see their teachers as role models every day, so there's a level of trust that's there already, um, which I think is really important. Um, I, I'm a very big advocate, maybe this is because of being a former community organizer, but I'm a very big advocate of collaboration, and I really feel that you know, we have to get to know the communities that we're serving. We have to partner with community-based organizations, and we can't be isolated. So, you know, our after-school programs uh, collaborate with a lot of other sports-based after-school programs as well. Um, and yes, we're all competing for the same funding and all of that, but I really feel like there's a strength in numbers. And I also feel that um, our teachers are really the, uh, they're the leaders, and um, and, and obviously our children are the leaders too, but um, I would say that you know, these, the school-based program is really important um, for, you know, for fostering this after-school movement too. Thank you. Um, as, far, as far as growing leaders within the, within the after-school arena, um, we, at the, we at the Yours Project uh, have looked to our inspiration in Venezuela, which has been, uh, been around for about 37 years. So they've had a, li a significant lifespan um, and some good experiences for us to look at. Turns out um, that though they start orchestra at the age of two or three, a lot of the, uh, the students down in Venezuela start dropping out of the program when they hit puberty. Um, <laughs> they, they have other interests that develops all of a sudden. Um, who knew? Uh, <laughs> and the same, the, same thing, the same thing has been happening to us. We have a K-8 to program right now, and we're trying to expand to a high school pipeline. But a lot of our students, when they get a little older, they lose interest. And what Venezuela did, which is what we're implementing here, is we start to hire our students as teachers and train them to work in the program. And they turn out to be the best teachers we've ever had because they've been doing this for already four or five years and they can turn around and learn and learn how to work with their peers that are just a couple years younger than them. Um, as far as far as advocating for uh, for creating great after school leaders, really understanding the needs of the community you're in first, and bringing bringing what you have to give to those needs, as opposed to saying I have something awesome to give and you need it, being invited being invited in, and really transferring that understanding. I think I would echo all the comments that have been made. I just want to add that um, being a good leader means also empowering others to lead. And I think um, for those of us who work with young people and street level um, has done this um, all through our years, uh, we want to promote youth leadership and build young people as the leaders of their own programs and be a voice in how they want us to continue to support them. And so it is giving them opportunities to be peer mentors. It's giving them opportunities for us where they serve as teaching assistants, where they are interns in our facilities, um, but really also letting them understand that the skills that they build within our programs translates to the other things that they will be involved in in life. And I think that's where we really um, want to continue to make a difference. 
and you know, I, and, you know, when I think about, um, uh, you know, people who are helping to build this with us, our volunteers, I'll just really have to say wonderful group of volunteers that you've met, uh, many of them, and you see many of them who are standing around uh, this room, or you met them at the registration table. And, you know, we look for people who have a um, commitment uh, to young people, as, um, you know, Mary Ellen uh, Karen was saying earlier, you know, about, you know, how important it is that we have people around who really do like young people, you know, who really like teenagers and like uh, children. And um, so I think it starts with, you know, identifying people who really like working with young people, first of all, as volunteers. They make some of the best volunteers. And, and, and also part of that is looking for people, um, even though volunteers may be of any age, you know, but are they willing to grow as well? So the development is not just for the young people, but the volunteers also grow. They also develop. And those who are willing to grow and willing to develop, you know, make the best um, of volunteers and they and they develop into leaders as well even though